Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about hiring developers. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, I want to hire a team of software engineers for a new project. Should I go with local developers or in a low cost co-working space or with a distributed team that all work remotely? Well, if the corona thing is still an issue for you, uh, it's probably going to be remote these days at the very least. So you don't really have a choice. But the thing I would want, I wanted to say, is that you should probably go with a, uh, like the initial team should be local, ideally. Because when you start a new, when you start a new company, a, a new IT company, you really need to be picky about the developers you hire. You really need to be picky. Like I'm serious. Like uh, if if the difference, like okay, if you are the least bit unsure about a developer, wait. Don't hire people without really knowing who you're hiring, because the first developers that you have, they will set the tone of the code base, and they will also be the people who have the most amount of knowledge for anybody you want to hire second. In other words, you don't you can't just think about these people. You have to think about these people from not just the productivity perspective for you right here and now. You also have to think about are these the sorts of people that will play nice with each other and welcome a new group member? Because if you have you if you hire say that you hire a team of three developers, if you hire three douchebags that never co coordinate or anything like that, your code is going to suck, and you will never be able to save on cost or hire like a junior developer or like even maybe even a new de a senior developer because they are not going to let that person into the group. So that's why you really want these people to get along as well as possible. Chemistry is key here. It is so key. The perfect, like in my personal experience, the perfect combination for a small new team is to have two seniors and one junior. That's usually a good ratio because then you have two senior developers who have the ability to take on like the serious work, and you have one junior that can produce, uh, that usually gets training for a lower salary and they can produce in the simpler areas because the thing that you want to optimize for is that some tasks are actually very simple and the, like in, in the, the senior developers they can of course do it but a lot of the work that you do are it's high stake especially in the early days you just need things to work really well and you need people to make good decisions and that's what the seniors are going to give you sometimes you're not going to i mean this is an idealistic team and if you can get a team like this it's perfect because if you always have two seniors to one junior you can always make sure that one person is has time for the junior so that they continuously progress and then they get training and then you can hire the next person and then the next person ideally you never want to hire more than uh, a one-to-one -one ratio between the seniors and the juniors uh, so I mean you can grow the team exponentially the more people you ha you hire if you're doing it correctly but I at the same time you don't want to hire people more than a few months apart uh, ideally a quarter or four months or something like that because it takes a little while to train a junior developer and you can of course just hire more seniors to to fill out the ranks but it's good that you have to have a have a think about the proportions because it's expensive to hire seniors but at the same time you can't just ignore them because the juniors are going to fuck up your code if they're completely alone uh, that that's a big risk for you but ideally you want these people to be local because you need them to have a good camaraderie and you need to really go heavy on making sure that they get along with each other. I mean this can of course work with a t remote working team. If you really invest in chemistry and you really push the like video conferences as a rule and you really go heavy on like live chatting and collaboration and things like that you can build this sort of camaraderie type of spirits but in many cases it's easier if they're on site with with each other uh, because these more organic conversations will happen as opposed to them just talking when they need to so really optimize for uh, when you're starting your first team uh, for chemistry over everything like uh, skill is absolutely I mean if you can get really talented developers that's that's really great but it's even more important that they work well together than it is that one person is like a super genius and everybody else is like uh, I mean because if even if you have a super genius if that person is not able to collaborate with the others 
you actually will damage your like the long-term uh, health of your company and ideally and this is just me now like it, it this is not a given you want these people to stick around for a long time because as i said they are very quickly going to be the most important people in your company if it goes somewhere the first generation as we like to call them like the first 50 that's usually what you talk about in the startup world uh, they are the most important people in the history of your company no uh, because they will be the people who are the ones who know practically everything about everything because they built it everybody else is second generation uh, or the people after that they're just going to inherit a lot of code or I mean they might be making their own stuff but the first uh, first batch of uh, features and so forth the core stuff that makes up the heart of your business are made by these people so you really need to be picky with these people so what I want you to take away from this is that if you ask me if you should hire remote workers or on-prem if for a completely fresh team if you're starting a fresh company ideally you want them to be local so that it would be not because you have to rather because what you're after is to get good chemistry going between the te the team members that is absolute key because they will be uh, many cases they will have to jump in and do things that might not always be the best thing or like they, they're going to have to go the extra mile for your company in the early days and if they're not willing to make that sort of investments uh, they might not be a good fit for you because in the early days you kind of have to be a jack of all trades you have to do everything you because i mean you can't just say that no i'm a, just a front-end developer if there's no person available who can do the back end you have to do all these things at the small scale and you can get this to work with remote workers it's just that you have to be really 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 sure that they are sociable people and that you can get this camaraderie and chemistry going because once the company starts growing these are the people that you're going to put new strangers into the mix like you're going to put the put new new people in and they need to be able to grow together with these people and if you hired a bunch of douchebags who never want to talk to each other your company is going to suffer for it the best thing for you is to find developers who are really enthusiastic about building something new and they want to be a part of the journey and uh, that they are sociable enough that they can get new people in dream ratio two seniors to every one uh, junior developer and take it from there uh, that means that you can always uh, you, you can start saving on cost and the seniors will be able to uh, to train and guide the new juniors that you are hiring have a great day